continued another 200 to 400 yards. attempts to reach pillboxes and throw hand grenades through the narrow gun openings. The third battalion was committed. never got more than 600 yards past the line of departure. Our initial assault on San Pietro had been repulsed with heavy casualties. The attack on Hill 1205, however, was a brilliant success. Leading elements of the 1st Battalion had gained the summit of the objective before a strongly entrenched enemy knew that an assault was in progress. To the right of 1205, the 3rd Ranger Battalion had also captured its objective. But only after successive attacks and costly casualties for on 9-5-0, the enemy was not taken unaware. Counterattacks were to be expected on both 12-05 and 9-5-0. They were not long developing. during the early daylight hours, and even as it was beaten off, another took form. Day and night they followed in unremitting violence. The toll of enemy dead mounted with each new attempt. German prisoners captured on 12.05 and 9.50 said they had been ordered to retake those positions at all cost. In addition to defending Hill 12.05, the 1st Battalion, obedient to the field order, undertook the reduction of enemy defenses which were organized along the ridge running west. December, the 1st Battalion was reinforced by the 504th Parachute Battalion, which took over and maintained the defenses of 1205 and 950, thereby enabling the 1st Battalion to throw its entire remaining strength into the assault along the ridge. But the 1st strength had dwindled and shrunk in the five days past and there was now a question as to whether its existing numbers were sufficient to prevail. Reports during the night of the 14th of December stated that the enemy was offering bitter resistance and that the issue was in grave doubt. Meanwhile, on the olive terraces below, the 2nd and 3rd battalions had twice again attempted to reach their objective. Both times they had come up against a wall of automatic weapon, mortar and artillery fire. 
volunteer patrols made desperate attempts to reach enemy positions and reduce strong points. Not a single member of any such patrol ever came back alive. Our attacking forces were furnished excellent aerial cover by Allied fighter patrols. But now and then, enemy planes were able to slip through and to bomb and strafe our positions, which to all purposes had remained unchanged since the first day. To break the deadlock, orders were given for a coordinated divisional attack the 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the 143rd to proceed in the execution of the original orders. Acting in conjunction, Company A of the 753rd Tank Battalion to attack San Pietro from the east over the high road. One battalion of the 141st to attack over the flat valley floor. After nightfall on D-Day, the 142nd Infantry Regiment to attack Mount Lungo. The earlier decision not to attack those strategic heights having been reversed in view of the present critical situation. In preparation for the attack, all 5th Army artillery within range, including tanks and all tracks, was directed against San Pietro and the surrounding area. Each hour, 1,200 hours. D-Day, the 15th of December. The 141st Infantry advanced some 400 yards from its line of departure to be borne down and held powerless under the weight of enemy fire. The 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the 143rd advanced some 100 yards beyond their former positions to a point almost directly before forward enemy defenses. And for the third time, they were forced to take such cover as the quaking earth could offer. And the tanks. Orders were for them to enter the town and to locate and destroy the heavy weapons there, which were leveled against our attacking foot soldiers. The high road into San Pietro is a narrow mountain road, and from the beginning of its winding descent in the Leary Valley, it was under direct enemy observation. Sixteen tanks started down that road. Three reached the outskirts of the town. These two were destroyed, and one was missing. Five tanks were immobilized behind enemy lines, their crews having to abandon them. Five tanks hit enemy mines within our lines and were thereupon destroyed by enemy gunfire. Four tanks returned to the bivouac area. After dark, two companies, one from the 2nd Battalion and one from the 3rd, finally succeeded in penetrating enemy positions before San Pietro. But receiving both frontal and flanking fire, they were forced to retire. 
Company E having been reduced in strength to a handful of riflemen, and Company L faring little better. 